Hey, it's Mike. Thanks for tuning back in. I've got what I think is a short one here, and I'm also excited to test out a new microphone. I think it was longtime subscriber Joe who mentioned that my audio is not great on videos like this, and it's great when I'm doing voiceover. So I'm going to try to give myself some better audio here. Let me know in the comments if, if it is better. Um, so this one is about the 1939 Ted Williams play ball card. My friend Ryan sent me a link to an auction the other day uh, of eBay, and I'm actually going to move to the side here so I can get some some uh, images put up. 1939 play ball Ted Williams PSA 8. This card is 82, 83 years old, and somehow it is in PSA 8 condition. How does that happen? I don't. I can't. I can't fathom that. Uh, a lot of cards in 2021 would come pack pulled fresh from the pack and not great out at a PSA 8. Centering issues, they get dinged, and somehow a card that's 83 years old gets a PSA 8. Now, of course, it could have been graded. I didn't look up the grading information. It could have been graded 20 years ago or even 25 years ago, but still, that still left it 60 years old. Um, so I, I got really curious about the play balls, uh, the play ball cards. How did they happen, and uh, delved a little bit into the history of the play ball cards. They were created by a company called Gum Inc., who had, the year before, come out with a card series called The Horrors of War. <laughs> it's in the middle of World War II, of course, and uh, they had these morbid cards called The Horrors of War, and they were very, very popular, and Gum Inc. was growing really fast, even during a, a bad depression. And so they decided to release player cards, baseball player cards, uh, in gum packs for a penny. And uh, so they started in 1939, play ball. <clears throat> Ted Williams was number 92 in the set. That year was his rookie year, so this is his rookie card. And uh, he led the league that year as a rookie in runs batted in, total bases. He uh, was fourth in the MVP voting as a rookie. It's it's. Uh, the only close thing for us would be Mike Trout. Um, so there are, I looked up in PSA's population count, 88 other PSA 8s, which is amazing. I, How do you find these? I want to find some of these myself before they get graded so I can buy them cheap and then sell them high. And not only are there 88 8s, there are 12 9s, and there's a PSA 10. How? How? So I was talking to my friends, James and Kevin, about this at lunch the other day, and I think it was James who speculated that somebody had just, like, closed it in a book and left it there for 60 years, which I, I don't even know if that would come out that, that good. So uh, a little mind-boggling. Um, 1939 was also the same year that Bowman cards were introduced. Pausing here to correct myself that Gum Inc. actually became Bowman baseball cards. And uh, the play balls were originally, I think the goal was to make them a little bit bigger than Gaudi, to set them apart from Gaudi because the Gaudis were smaller. And of course now cards are, I think, even a little bit bigger than the play balls. Another interesting thing about the play ball set is that there were intended to be 250 cards. The set is numbered to 162 but there are actually only 161 cards, and it's missing number 126. Uh, and nobody really knows who number 126 was supposed to be. There's a theory, the biggest theory is that it was intended to be a chase card, that you know people would, would be, say, oh, I'm missing 126, and constantly be buying more gum to get that card and never get it, which is an interesting theory and probably pretty valid. Uh, numbers 115 and higher are considered short prints. They are more scarce. They were the high numbers. They also had sample. Some cards were stamped sample, and there is a very, very small population of those for Ted Williams. Uh, the 1939 play ball set also has an early Joe DiMaggio. It's not, I don't believe it's his rookie, but it's a very early Joe DiMaggio, which is very, very highly desirable. And you can see the pictures were better than those in the Gaudis, so they, they kind of took off and uh, not very much longer in, in the grand scheme of things did Bowman really take off in tops as well.
So yeah, I, I was just blown away by this Ted Williams PSA 8, priced probably appropriately, at least based on historical sales and what PSA says it should be valued at. Um, uh, Ted Williams, I just told a Ted Williams story on my TTM video about a week ago about how poorly he treated me when I was just a, a kid, uh, but I still I want all of his cards. I don't have any uh, vintage Ted Williams cards. I have some from the 80s. Uh, those are, you know, I want I want cards from his playing years, from, I think he retired in 59, maybe. I do actually have some from 59, but not his base cards, just that weird 1959 Fleer, Fleer subset. I have, I don't know, 10 of those, two of which are PSA graded, um, but none, no, no, none of his base cards, which I would love to have. So anyway, short quick video. If you're interested into this kind of thing, I do this two to three times a week. Baseball cards, mostly vintage and occasionally basketball cards as well. Uh, give me a subscribe and let me know what you think. If you have any vintage Ted Williams from before he retired, uh, I'd be really interested to hear that. Thanks for watching.